So today, I want to talk about three of the most misleading food labels out there and how to avoid getting tripped. First up, no added sugar. This may be one of my favorite ones. You see this on juices, dry fruits, and a lot of other snacks. What they don't want you to know is that this basically means that this product already has so much sugar in it, we didn't need to add any more. So if you see no added sugar, your antenna radars ought to be blaring that this is a trick to make you eat huge sugar-laden products. So the other thing you want to look for, so many labels now say added sugar, and you look at added sugar as what you actually think is in that product. In fact, the system's being manipulated to disguise all the other sugar that's already there. So sure, if you see a product with a lot of added sugar, you want to be aware that that's probably not a product that you want to use. But even if you see very little added sugar, that doesn't mean you should go look for the real sugar content. So how do you find the real sugar content? First of all, don't look at total sugar. Look at total carbohydrates be one of the first things under the carbohydrate level. Right below that, you'll see fiber. Take the total carbohydrate level, number minus the fiber. That will actually tell you the entire grams of sugar in that product. Now, what does that mean? Well, one teaspoon of table sugar has four grams of sugar. So fun thing to do is take that total carbohydrates minus the fiber, take that number in grams of sugar, divide it by four, and that'll tell you the teaspoon of sugar in that serving size. Now remember, companies are very clever. They reduce the serving size to get you a number that you'll feel pretty good about. The other thing companies have done because of labeling laws is if there is a half a gram of trans fat per serving, you don't have to list trans fats on a label. So many companies will take the serving size, reduce it to just the level where they no longer have to show you trans fats on a label. But nobody, quite frankly, is going to eat the serving size because in each package there may be two, three, four, five servings in a package. And it's incredibly unusual for human behavior to not completely eat the entire package. So buyer beware. Let me give you an example. Uh, we had the former head of the FDA on our podcast uh, last year. He uses the example of a bagel. So a bagel usually has around 330 calories. And if you look at the label, it will say zero sugar. But in fact, if you do this math, you'll find that the total carbohydrates of the bagel is about 33 grams of carbohydrates and zero fiber. So that means 33 grams divided by four, that's about eight teaspoons in that no sugar bagel. And as we talked about on other podcasts, when you finally grind up grain products, you actually make the sugar more accessible for absorption than plain table sugar. In fact, that's why bread has a glycemic index of 100, and table sugar, which is half fructose and half glucose, by the way, it's sucrose, has a 
glycemic index of 85, you're actually getting more sugar in from a piece of bread than sugar. Wow. And you can't even taste the sugar in the bread. So buyer beware. Now, another one of my favorites is organic, free-range, or cage-free eggs. It sounds pretty good, doesn't it? Wrong. First of all, free-range and cage-free chickens merely describes that the chickens don't have to be in a cage. It doesn't mean they're, they're allowed to go outside. Commercial chicken warehouses can contain up to 100,000 birds in a warehouse, jammed so close together that they actually support their own weight because these chickens have such osteoporosis in their legs that fully 10 to 20% of chickens that are sold for frying chickens actually have broken legs because they couldn't support their own weight. And by the way, there's some fascinating evidence that it's the lectins in the corn and soybeans that fed these chickens that are the problem. So a free range chicken by law can be kept indoors for its entire life as long as you open the door to this warehouse for five minutes every 24 hours and the chicken has the potential to go outside to a three yard by three yard by three yard patch of dirt or grass. And quite frankly, those 100,000 chickens aren't gonna get through that door in five minutes. So, but that's the definition of a free range chicken. Chickens are fed corn and soybeans. They are full of lectins. And remember, you are what you eat, but you are what the thing you're eating is. And that's why so many times you'll see organic cage-free eggs that are quite frankly pale yellow in the yolk. They have absolutely no of the vitamins and polyphenols and beta carotenes that a chicken would normally eat when eating bugs out in the field. And by the way, you can't certify that the bugs that the chicken should be eating are organic because you didn't test all those bugs. So look for pastured chickens. If you can't find pastured chicken eggs, your second best choice is omega-3 eggs. Why? Because the chickens are fed either flax seeds or algae or both. And they have omega-3 fats in their yolks. Those omega-3 fats are alpha-linolenic acid. And if you looked at my last book and read it, you'll notice that alpha-linolenic acid, ALA, is actually the one fat that made the difference in the famous Lyon Heart Diet Study in preventing coronary artery disease. So imagine that you're going to get a nice dose of ALA every time you have an omega-3 egg or a algae-based egg. And there's several good manufacturers of uh, algae-based eggs. With that in mind, eat the yolks and give the whites to your dog. Your dog is going to love it. You're, you're going to get all the benefit of the alpha linolenic acid, and you'll also get a healthy dose of choline for your brain simultaneously. Okay, number three, light or diet products. Now, almost all of these products with this label contain artificial sweeteners like saccharin, aspartame, sucralose, which are practically poisonous. You might know them better by their brand name, Sweet and Low, Equal and Splenda. The problem with these sweeteners is that they actually kill gut bacteria. So imagine that you're having a light or a low-fat, low-sugar yogurt, and you're thinking, hey, this is great. I'm going to get all these wonderful, healthy probiotics from my yogurt. But in fact, a study from Duke University in 2007 showed that one packet of Splenda sucralose 
can kill off 50% of your gut bacteria. So why would you eat a potentially healthy, low-fat, low-sugar yogurt to get the probiotic when in fact the sucralose in that product is going to kill whatever you swallowed and half of your gut buddies simultaneously. Talk about a bad idea. When you kill off your gut bacteria, remember, you're going to prompt more and more bad bacteria to replace, replace them. That's going to cause more leaky gut, and you're going to gain weight due to the inflammation that follows leaky gut. Now, if a diet food isn't high in sweetener, it's often loaded in, with fat and artificial flavors instead of healthy fats. One more interesting thing that I've written about in the past, but I think it bears repeating. Anytime you have a fruit in a yogurt, or you even take one of these low calorie yogurts, and you add some blueberries or you add some blackberry, you should know that that milk product will actually bind to the polyphenols in the fruit that are beneficial to you, and you'll get absolutely no benefit from those polyphenols. And this has been shown in multiple human studies where people were given blueberries, for instance, or blueberries mixed with yogurt. <clears throat> and lo and behold, if you look at their blood levels of polyphenols and those metabolites for one hour, three hours, and six hours after you ate them, you'll find that, in fact, these polyphenol metabolites went up in the blood of volunteers who ate blueberries, but when the blueberries were mixed with yogurt or with a milk-based smoothie, there was no benefit. There were no uptake of these polyphenol ingredients. So just because it says low fat or low calorie and it's got fruit and probiotics doesn't mean that you're actually going to get the benefit that you think you're getting. This next one is sure to surprise you. So can you imagine that you could actually improve your brain by eating a lion's mane mushroom? It's true, you can.